Michael Pollan's book. Yeah. Um, and I've since, I've not finished the book because I've since got sidetracked with Fire Emblem, <laughs> uh, which if anybody's played Fire Emblem Three Houses, you know how addicting yeah. that game is. Um, but I, I've gotten to like, kind of like the lit, the, like the last part of that book. I, th- I think I'm on like the last third or quarter of the book. Um, and you talked a lot about Michael Pollan's book and like the effect it had on you that made you willing to try. It's like, yeah, dude, totally broke the stigma. Yeah, totally. And I, and I think it did too. Like from my perspective of reading it as somebody who's already bought into it, already bought into the brand and yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, I really liked that he was so measured in such a way that I don't think anybody could possibly say this dude's a zealot for yeah, this. Dude, you he's know, he's a I mean? great writer too. He's a great writer. You know, the 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 structure, the form, mm-hmm. it was entertaining and, and engaging. Um, he would not talk about any one thing for too long before you would be able to like yeah. start moving into another direction, and he would mm-hmm. cover a different topic. So all in all, I really liked that book a lot and i feel like now i have a greater context for what you were talking about yeah listening to it back uh the other day sure so. and he's like he's kind of i think we're gonna look back on him and see that he was the one that kind of brought it back into the mainstream in this day and age mm-hmm. because he like draws he i remember him i don't remember which video it was but he said it's so cool to like go out into public and have conversations about this and draw a crowd that isn't just psychonauts. Mm -hmm. Like people who are actually, like people are actually listening. Yes. Like people in the mental health field and like just normal people who are like fans of his or like, you know, all that, but. Totally. You know, he actually came to Chicago recently. Yeah. Um, I did. I saw that. Maybe it was like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, Joey's girlfriend, Sarah, she's like in the psychology field and that's what she's yeah it was a psych minor for yeah so she actually went and saw that um and she said so this is somebody who joey and i have been preaching to her (laughs) about psychedelics and she like you know it's not that she didn't believe us but she just is like uh i mean we'll see we'll see if it does all those things you guys say um but then when she went and saw him speak and a bunch of other people in the psych field. So yeah. he's literally on a tour with other like psychology, like leads in the, in the psychology world, um, talking about these things and talking mm. about how effective they are. And it was really cool to see how he had changed her mind. Yay. <laughs> he did. He changed nice. her mind and nice, she, nice. and she definitely like seemed more excited about the prospect of, of using that in her career moving forward. Mm hmm being in psychology or you know being a psychiatrist yeah, dude that's gonna be a big part of it i think it's gonna be a huge part of it i yeah. think you're more likely to see success in that field than you are in just like recreational use of the right. shit you know right because like in a professional setting and i think all of the ones he did and the ones that he talked about are in a professional clinical setting where you mm-hmm. have the right set and setting you have all the necessary precautions to make sure that you don't spiral or have like a bad trip uh, there's somebody there like yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be huge it's gonna be it's gonna be huge, huge. <laughs> it's gonna be totally huge <laughs> um yeah i thought it was really interesting how he like was seeking out different guides throughout the book yeah and some and of them like were some like, of them he was like <laughs> nope <laughs> yeah it was a, he was like a, a lithuanian or like romanian dude and uh he was treading lightly on it because he was kind of nervous about like, you know, fucking with his mind. He didn't Mm want to like, he's like, my mind's the only thing connecting me to reality. Mm -hmm. And he asked the guy, what happens if I die? And the guy was like, well, we'll just bury you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He was like, okay, I'm going to try and find somebody. He's like, he's like, let me find someone else. Cause he was obviously joking. He was joking. And And he was also saying it because I think he never thought that that was a real threat. Yeah. You know, but from what Michael Pollan talks about in that book mm-hmm. is that he's got like a heart condition or like, a, you know, a heart yeah. arrhythmia or something where it was like irregular heartbeats. Yeah. So he had a legitimate side thing that's completely unrelated to the psychedelic that could have been a challenge for him in yeah. that state. And then it does elevate your heart rate. And it does. I know you and I have uh, talked about microdosing yeah, on how I've heard that can elevate your heart rate on how do it, it does. Lot. It does elevate your heart rate. And so there, you know, like anything in moderation, 